Champ, leave the chickens alone. Hey, it's the preacher. And today we're going to turn this pile of brush behind me into some stew. Well, we'll need a Dutch oven and some deer meat and some vegetables and beef stock and all that too, but we're going to start a fire out of this brush pile. I'm going to start trying to trim this thing up. I won't get it all cut up today, but I'll get a bunch of it. And I think the chickens, I might find I might find a whole nest of eggs in there. We've been letting the chickens out every day or so. And uh, they get off in there and lay eggs, I think. So anyways, I'm going to get to cutting around on this pile of brush and we'll get us a fire going. And I'm going to bring you some uh, Dutch oven deer stew on the coals. Stick around. I join up in the Boy Scouts just early enough to go on the big camp out for a week and then I'd get back out of the Boy Scouts. But they always was like, show you how to build a fire. And so we learned the TP method and the log cabin method. And let me show you how to build a fire the preacher way. You need you a couple of 12 packs and then stuff them full of packing paper like stuff comes in. Set them inside a box, just like that, see? Champ, uh, he's spotting it out there. Set them in a box, then lay another box over it. Then take you a couple of pizza boxes and wrap around the outside to hold in the heat and direct the flames upward. Then start grabbing some of this brush and pile it on top of there. Let me show you how that looks. Yeah, with a match. This ain't the Flintstones. This is the 21st century. We're going to use a match. Well, that's all the coals and a few logs I have left on there. You can see I've made quite a dent in the brush pile over there. I've even rolled out some of the bigger logs. Really what I need to do is just get in here with my side-by-side -side and pick up some of these logs I've cut for firewood. And uh, I've got a little brush I need to throw on here. But before I stoke this fire all up again and get a big blazes, you really want to cook in that Dutch oven right there on the coals. So uh, I'm going to get a shovel full of coals and set over here to the side where we can cook. I'm going to set this number 12 lodge right on top of it. All right, now I like this stuff here. Avocado oil. You get you a big old bottle at Sam's for about seven bucks. Let's lift this lid. Yeah, that's looking hot in there. Let's put some oil in it and get this oil heating up. We don't put too much. But deer meat is notoriously lean. This is Dale's seasoning. I learned about this from Gary and Debbie out in Mississippi. They, they cook some steaks marinated in this and I've been a lover of Dale seasoning ever since. It's great for marinating steaks or even shaking on steaks when you cook them. Now Dale's is real salty and it'll turn your meat black. And if you can look there, this is some neck meat right on the front of a buck deer. If you just look at him right square in the face, this would be the big neck muscles that ran down either side of his windpipe. Just right in the front of his neck. I took that and cut most of the tendon off and then diced it up into about bite-sized pieces let's have a look at one right here there's you just just a chunk it's just stew size and it's been marinating in that dales for a couple days now i put it in the freezer so i know this is plenty hot let's put that in there and get it sauteing around is a black pan and the meat has been soaking in a black sauce so everything's dark but we got us a pretty good sizzle going there how often do you see a raccoon in the daylight 
Now I don't really want a crispy texture on this. I just want it pretty much cooked. And that's about where I am. It's pretty much cooked. So now I'm going to add some onions. That's a medium onion. And I'm going to let it brown around in there with the meat for a while. I'm going to let that go for four or five minutes. And uh, that'll soften them onions up a little bit. See you in about five minutes. My time. Now, your time. All right, it's been about five minutes. Let's have a look. I set that, that lid right there on a couple logs. Keep it up out of the dirt. That's looking about right. Anytime, see how I've got equal amounts of liquid on all sides? That means I've got my pot level. If I had it tilted over here, everything would be over there. This over here would be burning. This over here would be boiling. So you want that level. Now that we've got it level, we're going to add some beef broth. All right. Give that a stir around. My onions are starting to get translucent. My deer meat's cooked. Just needs to get tender. That'll take time. Let's put our vegetables in there as well. Now to the deer meat and the onions, I'm gonna add some carrots and celery. And I know everybody, how much? However much you like. Some people hate celery, some people hate carrots. Hey, some people hate everything. Just whatever you like. If you like a lot of celery or a lot of carrots or a lot of onions or all meat, I don't care. Just whatever you think would be good. I don't measure this stuff. All right, now what we're gonna do is let that stew for a while. That's why they call it stew. The, the plan now is I'm gonna get over here and uh, get some of this wood pulled out, cut some more brush, stoke up this fire, and then I'll just check the coals every 30, 40 minutes. If it don't look like it's hot enough, I'll add fresh coals. If it looks like it's too hot, I'll slow it down. You know, Dutch oven cooking's easy. It's forgiving, but you do have to kind of keep an eye on it. And with stew, you, you let it go a long time. So, anyways, I got firewood work to do. See you guys when it's time to add taters in about two hours. Y'all hear that fire? Not a lot of smoke. Really no smoke. That's hickory. Hickory burns hot. And that little crackling and popping, you may see some little embers flying out just coming out of there. That burns hot and it crackles and pops and little embers fly off and when you're an overall wearing man, sometimes one of them embers will hit you right here and fall down in your overalls. And then it'll burn you when it hits your belly, so you'll do a little hot dance. It'll get down and burn your leg, and you'll have to shake your leg out like that. Then it'll get down and burn your ankle where it falls in the top of your shoe. Man, one of them just landed over there. We're already too close. Let's check on it a little bit. Oh yeah, got a little boiling going there. Man, that looked like a witch's brew. Look at the steam coming off that. Here's what we got going on down in there. Huh? Huh, <laughs> yeah. Right here I have a bowl of potatoes and I've got some chopped garlic right on the top. How many potatoes? Many as you want. Just as many as you want. Now these taters are gonna go in there and they're gonna cook. These are the little round, I call them baby potatoes. Some people call them new potatoes. Uh, they were, I normally would just put regular potatoes in here, but these are normally like $3.99. And I was walking around, they had them on clearance for like $1.29. So I thought, man, for a buck twenty-nine, I'm throwing them in the stew. So there we go, we'll put the lid on that. Take a look at those coals. Tell you what, I'm gonna throw another scoop of coals on there.
Why wouldn't you put your side by side in a deer stew video? Let's have a look at it. I checked the taters a minute ago and they's just about ready. They's good and soft. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now, I've got me a ladle. I'm going to skim some of that oil off the top of there. Now, I don't want all the fat off because remember, fat's flavor. All right, so our meat and our potatoes are cooked, our carrots are cooked, our celery's about gone. That's the way I like it, about gone. Let me show you what I did here. Got me a can of whole kernel corn. If you look in there, you're like, what in the world is that? Well, rather than carrying the Lowry seasoned salt and the pepper grinder, I just ground all the pepper and put some Lowry's in the top, and I added it in there with the corn. I know. How much corn you put, preacher? Whole can. Give that a stir around. Folks, I'm here to tell you, if you could smell this right now, that steam's hitting me right in the face, so I know it's plenty hot. Let's go ahead and plate us up a bowl. Look at that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me show you what this looks like. You can see the corn, big chunks of meat, taters, carrots. Now, the wife's got a pan of cornbread in the oven, but by the time it's ready, the sun will be too low and you won't be able to see the food or me eating it. Pretty good flock of blackbirds. So let's try it. And let, I mean, don't think I ain't taking a bite of this until just now. One thing that needs, and I keep it, right here in the old saddlebag pocket, little Texas Pete. Mmm. Stir that around. Let's have a little try. Big old chunk of meat. Mmm. Boy, I'm telling y'all what. What is it, champ? Did Timmy fall down a well? Let's try taters and carrots and a little bit of corn. Mmm. Y'all gotta try this. The only thing I hate about YouTube is y'all can't come over and have a bowl of deer stew with me. Mmm. Well, if you made it this far and you're still watching and you haven't seen the video of me killing this deer, I'll put a link to it right above my head. Mm. I'm telling you, this is the neck muscles that you see in a deer, a big, a big swole up buck. And if you saw the video of my deer, you know what size neck it had on it. This is those two big muscles right there that I just pulled out, cut the tendons, the white silver skin off, and then diced them up. And they have turned out tender. I didn't add a whole lot of salt for the amount of stew because that Dale's has a lot of salt in it. Mm. Man, I'm telling you what. If you didn't know this was deer meat, somebody didn't tell you this was deer meat, you'd never know by tasting it. Champ, come over here. Don't be breathing on the camera. Smells good, don't it, buddy? No, you can't have none. 
There's a wonder he didn't bite my arm off. If he'd known what was in here, he would've. Mmm. I, I don't know what I'd do to make it any better. Now go kill you a deer and get you a Dutch oven and build a fire and cook your own. Trust me. Do it now. Thank me later. <laughs>